Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. I am Dr. Saeed Jahdi. I am electri in electrical engineering, and I'm going to talk about the electrical and electronic engineering and the computer science department within the School of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Engi Engineering Math Department of the University of Bristol. So, uh, to give you some uh, information about myself first, uh, I am the electrical and electronics academic lead for the careers and employability of the school. I am teaching two separate units that hopefully I will see you here and I will be teaching the power electronics and machines and drives. And also I, uh, I am the lecturer for the low carbon energy systems. And I also supervise different undergraduate projects and PhD students within the department. I am a member of the Electrical Energy Management Group, which is the key, one of the key research groups within the university that is actively researching on low carbon energy transport, smart grids, electric vehicles, more electric aircrafts, etc. And we are doing a lot of uh, high voltage, high energy research on electrical machines, power electronics, etc., which are, which are the underpinning technologies required for the future decarbonization. And uh, so you may be wondering, what is electrical, uh, electronic engineering, electrical engineering, and computer science in the first place? So if you, if you uh, start to look at the physical world inputs, we have got so many different electronics components that may be connected to a system. And every single of these components will need uh, to have energy storage connected to them. So you will need batteries to be able to charge them and uh, provide you the electricity that you will need for the consumers, which are the electronics components. So you will, we will need to design every single of these equipments separately, and that requires an extensive knowledge in terms of electronics engineering. Also, you will need to have logic circuit and algorithms that which need, will need that uh, good knowledge in software, which is the computer science part of the applications today. And this enables you to have a sense of the physical world and the interpretation and decision making, which is part of the artificial intelligence, which is a very trendy topic these days. And you will also need to have communications with the external world, which will be through the wireless com connections or the wired connections, which is part of, again, the interface between electronics and the computer science. So uh, if you look at the uh, a, uh, phone, a typical phone, all of these elements that I just explained will be inside there. And you will have sound images and both as inputs, as outputs, and also connection to internet. So you will need to gain a lot of uh, skills to be able to design such a phone. Or for example, if you are driving an electric car, which is such as Tesla, which is a very trendy industry these days with lots of job opportunities, again, you will have different elements of the world that I just explained to you. And um, effectively, this will enable you to have the battery. Well, the battery will be much larger than what I have shown here, but effectively, uh, you will have rotational machines that are connected to the battery through the power electronics and it makes the car move. And you will need to have a skills and expertise to be able to design this perfectly. And that is what we are precisely will plan to do for you in Bristol is to give you that skills. Now you may be thinking, but it's just some wires, right? Well, there is a little bit more than that. There are some background information, there are some background science that you will need to know in terms of understanding and analyzing an electric circuit. So in terms of different type of electronic components, you will need to know what is an inductor, what is a capacitor, what is a resistor, and how can you use them, design the circuit, and also use them in practice to design the circuit that you actually need to deliver the application, be it the smartphone, uh, electric vehicle, etc. 
So there are a lot of industries that you may be involved with. There is transport, healthcare, climate change, industrial applications, energy, etc. And we will be covering all of them within the electrical and the electronics engineering and also the computer science department. And we have very good links with industry in all of these, in the UK, in the Europe, and in fact, globally. So what problems do you want to solve, right? So that depends on the, uh, basically the, your area that you would like to select to study will be depending on the problems that you want to solve in the real world, the challenges that you want to basically encounter. So if you are more interested into computer science, that means that you are more interested into computers, laptops, uh, phones, etc. And remember that these are a little bit interchangeable with each other. They are interrelated. So uh, you will need to have some information on computer science and also you will still need to be a good electronics engineer as well. On the other hand, if you are more interested into electric vehicles, etc., so there is a combination between mechanical engineering and electrical engineering there too. So we have got a, a degree called computer science and electronics, which is joining the computer, pure computer science and pure electronic engineering to each other. We have also got another degree called mechanical and electrical engineering, which is again com a combination of mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. So these two topics are also very trendy these days. Our students are enjoying them a lot because they, they it will increase the careers and employability opportunities ahead of you. So from the welcome week on your first day, uh, in terms of the course structure, you will have three or four years until graduation. And beyond of that, which university will still support you in terms of the career activities? So you will have three or four years, depending on whether you're doing a BN or an MH degree. So, and during that degree, you will have subject specialization and also independent working. So you will start to learn by learning the fundamentals. There will be laborat practical laboratory sessions. There will be group projects with, which improve your team working skills. And there will also be an individual project will imp which will improve your um, effectively your individual research skills. Uh, during this year, there will be pastoral and academic support from our department. And also we have plenty of student societies which you can join uh, to also follow your hobbies and make friends and enjoy the time as well as studying hard. So uh, the, some of those uh, societies, for example, are Computer Science Society, MEC Society, etc., too, which are uh, basically give you subject specialization in terms of the student activities as well. So at Bristol, we will teach you subject knowledge, independent learning, Communication skills, which are key if you go to industry and start to work, communication is a very key skill to know. You, we, you will learn how to do critical thinking and also teamwork. So what do you, your first year looks in electrical and electrical engineering? So you will learn linear circuits and uh, basically uh, uh, be able to learn uh, how does the different components within an electronic circuit work? You will be able to basically understand the energy storage elements, and then you will learn a little bit of more about the semiconductor devices and also electromagnetism, which are very important if you want to design a cell phone, for example, the next iPhone generation. And also you will learn about electrical systems engineering. So in terms of a little bit more high power applications, the fundamental knowledge that you may be needing to understand uh, how to design an electric vehicle. So all of these will be followed for you with addition to semiconductors, which are basically one of the key elements in, in empowering our entire computers and communication skills. And these are the topics that will be covered for you in electrical engineering. In terms of computer science, 
There will be, you will also learn a lot uh, about computer programming, different languages, computer, uh, basically software and also hardware. So in terms of the projects that you will undertake in here in Bristol, we will have a group project, which I mentioned that you, there will be three or four or five of you, depending on the uh, projects that you have in hand to work together as a team, in a, as a teamwork um, effort to basically do the group project together. And the, here you can see an example of these group projects. There is a Rubik's Cube solver. So we have got a Rubik's Cube here. It's in an unknown state. And our students have designed uh, basically a robotic kind of solving it. So in a way that it will be automatically solved. So you will, over here, you will need to recognize the initial state to know what is the state of it, of the Ruby cube. And then you will also need to find the pattern on the fastest way to solve it because one of the key criteria for assessment was the speed of the solving this Ruby cube. And also once you found out uh, the fastest way, how to move the different elements of this Ruby cube so that you can effectively uh, solve it and uh, in a good span of time. So this will give you a very good technical knowledge in addition to uh, skills in terms of communication with your teammates, in terms of your team working and uh, scheduling your work, and both software and hardware, hands-on, uh, basically skills. So this is an example of the group project. So you will need to have computer vision, software soft solver, analog and communication and electronics, electromechanical actuators, so that it will be solving like this, as you can see in this video, depending on the speed of the rotation, the solving will be done in the, good span of time and you can see within say 10 seconds this ruby cube was solved and this is the recognition of the different states so you will also have you will do some individual projects and in this in this individual project you can have final projects that are depending on your own um, basic skills and what you are interested in. We will have a wide range of projects to choose from. So it will be up to you which project you, you want to take up. This is a project by one of our students, Daniel, and effectively it has a DSP controller, ultrasonic transducers, and to generate an acoustic standing wave. So you can have so many different type of projects and and uh, again, this will improve your research skills because there is an element of research involved in this individual research project. You will need to also read a little bit about background papers, scientific articles to understand the background and also to be able to implement it in a real application. Here, uh, at, as part of your uh, individual research project, you will have to create a poster and there will be a standing poster session where different academics come, speak to you, your fellow mate students will also come, and you, you will have a chance to showcase your own individual research to our students. As you can see here, two of our students, Srika and Daryl, have, are also presenting their work. Last year, given the COVID situation, it was online, but hopefully in the coming years, we are coming back to normal practice and there will be these poster sessions again coming up. So this is an opportunity for you to also learn regarding your presentation skills. Uh, so the type of different project that you may, that you may be seeing is a spectroscopy, predicting calorie content, designing and building a bicycle power meter, which was actually an, a student suggested project, etc. We have a wide range of teaching uh, and facilities in Bristol. We have got lecturing and chalk and talk. So that's the traditional lecturing in a classroom. You will have video tutorials. So there will be asynchronous sessions that 
video is recorded for you, you will watch it and then you will come to an online session or in-person session and you will ask any questions that you may have regarding the video that you have watched. If there was part of it that was not clear to you, you can always approach the lecturer in person and ask about the tutorials. There will be feedback always provided to you either in written or online. In terms of your homeworks, your uh, how you are, you have been doing in a special element of your course, um, we are using voting and polling sometimes in the classrooms using the state of the art of the software that is available to us to make sure that um, students have a good grasp of what is being taught in the class. There will be practical lab exercises. Hopefully more this year that you will be able to go to the laboratory and uh, learn about uh, how to the what you have saw in the lecture class is actually translates into an experimental practical laboratory session. There will be all our lectures will be recorded, so you will have access to the recorded lectures replay if, if you could not. Uh, attend a specific session. For example, you have been sick at home. You can always catch up with those, all those recorded lectures. There will be tutorials. You will have an uh, individual tutor, tutor and you, there will be tutorial sessions. You, you will go to the, your to, to, to tutor's uh, office uh, or sometimes it may happen online and uh, there will be tutorial session there. there is, tutors will help you both in terms of your scientific technical knowledge. And also they will teach you about soft skills. So for example, CV reviews, how, how to write a good cover letter, uh, how to approach interviews for a job, etc. These are elements that our tutors have some personal experience with and they can help you with. And of course, there will be a lot of projects. So individual project, group project, and also projects for a, a specific units. So it's, it's a quite a comprehensive teaching portfolio that we have in Bristol, in addition to the research. So our research, Bristol is also significantly known for its research portfolio. And our lecturers always aim to bring an element of their research into their teaching too, to give you a flavor of what does your teaching translate into the state of the art cutting edge research within the industry. And you will be able to also attend the creative, uh, create courses and uh, there will be, uh, this is a typical uh, timetable that you can see here in your, uh, in the session for a specific student you can see that all, all these different elements of the, uh, that I just described are being translated into the timetable too. So you will have lectures, tutorials, laboratories, etc. So a little bit on the admissions of what programs we have and what you can, what you can apply to. Before I continue, I just wanted to make sure that you, before making your application, please check the updated details of this on the university's website, because sometimes they may get changed, okay? So in electrical and, and electronic engineering, we have electrical and electronics degree, which is you can take as a bachelor's of engineering as three years or a master's as four years. There are options to also go for one year in industry to as an internship placement for one year in between of your course. There's options for to study abroad and also there's options to uh, take these degrees with innovation. So you can get a BEng with innovation, for example. Or, uh, and all of these will be either offered the year in industry, study abroad or innovation. You can take it as BEng or MEng etc. as well. We also, as I mentioned, we have got another unit course called uh, mechanical and electrical engineering, which is gives you a combination of the skills you need from both electrical and mechanical engineering disciplines 
to go to the fields like renewable energy, electric vehicles, etc. So such combination of the uh, structure of the two courses into the same program will give you a little bit more options in terms of your future career as well. Again, you can do it at, as bachelor's or master's year in industry, etc. as well. The requirements for these are typically triple A in A level, including an A in mathematics. We don't have any specific subjects required for the GCSE. And in terms of language, you typically will need to have an IELTS 6.5 with overall of at least six in all skills. Now, there are different type of uh, uh, English language tests that you can do and university accepts. And also there are some pre-sessional courses, uh, depending on where you come from, it may be that you have learned in uh, studied previously in an English speaking university, or you come from an English speaking country, etc. So you need to check these uh, English language requirements uh, carefully depending on your specific circumstances as to. So in terms of computer science, we, again, we have got computer science with B-Eng, M-Eng, Yeah Industry, Study Abroad, Innovation, etc. So B-Eng will be three years, M-Eng will be four years. If you take one year in between of year in industry, so your course will become five years. So four years in university and one year in industry. And also you can, you have the option of doing, for example, an study abroad as well. You can go through mathematics and computer science. So that's a combination between computer science and mathematics. And again, you will have different options here to choose from. And also there is an interesting course, which is called computer science and electronics, which is a combination of the computer science program and electrical and electronics engineering program. So if you take this, you will be able again to specialize in both computer science and electronics, both again as B-Eng or M-Eng, year in industry, study abroad, etc. The requirements for these uh, are a little bit higher than electrical and electronic engineering. So for computer science, uh, you will need A star and double A, and the A, A star needs to be in mathematics. If you want to do mathematics and computer science, it's A star, A star, A. And if you want computer science and electronics, which is a course combined between computer science and electrical and electronics, it is just triple A, okay? Again, there is no specific requirements for the GCSE profiles and the English language requirements are the same as above. So uh, overall IELTS of 6.5 with six in all skills. We have got plenty of hands-on research teaching and facilities too. So over here, so you can see our state of the art equipment. We have recently had a 500,000 pound investment in our state of the art laboratory equipment. Uh, so we have uh, updated everything we have got. The, uh, we have got equipments available to each bench in the electrical labs. We have got enhanced teaching capabilities such as in equipment scripting, automations, etc. So there will be a better experience for you in the lecture rooms. We have got a home lab kit. You can see it here in this picture. So if you want, if you have like to experience a certain electronic circuit at home, you can borrow this from us. These are available for loan. You can take it home, use it, do your experiment, have some fun maybe, and then return it back to university. So that will enable you to extend your studies beyond just being on the campus as well. We, as I mentioned, Bristol is a very well-known university for research as well. And our academics are specialists in different topics. They can be high performance networks, such as 5G, 6G, etc. Electrical energy management, which is I am part of. Digital health, com communication systems and networks microelectronics, photonics, visual informations, etc. 
so as you can see these are all cutting edge research uh, fields that are very trendy these days and by coming to you bristol you will inevitably be exposed to these as well you can have a chat with your academics in different departments regarding all of these and perhaps you want to do a phd in future as well in one of these research topics so after your bench or image you will have the option of doing phd here as well uh, we have got a diverse research portfolio and the final year projects that you will do are probably coming from one of these fields as well we have got very good links with industry so we, there is a good pathway to careers too so if you would like to have different uh, option of rather than doing a PhD, if you would like to go to industry directly, again, a lot of these companies knows, know our university very well. We have got students being recruited by them almost every year. So you will have uh, access to invited lectures from the industrial people from these companies that come to our university. There will be career presentations. There will be internship opportunities, such as the year industry program. And there will be project support sometimes from these companies too. So these partnerships inform our teaching, which will prepare you for the future. We have got an industrial liaison office, which will link our university and you as the students with the industrial experience. There is a first year mentoring of our first year students that will be connected and matched with an industrial mentor. So you will meet your mentor at least three times and reflect on the experience in the second year unit. So we have got a very huge uptake. A lot of our students are interested about this. We have got 250 mentors from 110 companies. So that will give you a good understanding of where we are in terms of our links with industry. And you can, as I mentioned before, you can take a placement year between your second and third year to work in industry for one year as well, which will be shining really well on your CV for your future career as well. So that's it for me. I try to give you a good overview of where, what we are doing in Bristol and what we can offer you. Um, if you have any specific questions, I will be very happy to answer them now. Thank you.